Today we shall cover two novels which simply do not provide me with enough material to talk about on their own. Mary St. Ledger Kingsley was a British novelist writing under the name Lucas Mallet. Mary was born in 1852 at the rectory in Eversley, Hampshire, the daughter of Reverend Charles Kingsley and Francis Eliza Grenfell. She attended Slade School and in 1876 she married Reverend William Harrison, minor canon of Westminster and priest in ordinary to the Queen. The marriage was unhappy and the two soon separated. Kingsley began writing soon after, receiving much praise for her 1885 Colonel Enderby's wife a fictionalized account of her own marriage. Mary lived for most of her life with her younger cousin, the soprano Gabriel Warnings, traveling over the continent. Warnings even finished Kingsley's last novel after her death. She died at a friend's house totally poor in 1931. We shall first review her 1896 The Carissima, a modern grotesque. It concerns Leversedge, a man who spent years in Africa making his fortune before returning home to marry his fiancée Charlotte. Except he is dogged by a persistent hallucination of an unkillable dead dog he once saw ripping the throat out of a toddler in the middle of a camp full of corpses in the veldt. Since then he always sees and smells the brute, and he is very mentally downtrodden, and were it not for his friend Hammond he would have called off the wedding. After introducing Hammond to Charlotte she has a private piano recital. But she seems to be playing weird chaotic music which sets the Eversedge off and his fear of the invisible undead hound. And then you realize after Charlotte tries to play false with Hammond, this was no coincidence. Charlotte does not love Leversedge, and was conspiring the whole time with a noted ass named Percy Girard to drive him fully insane to get at his fortune, whereupon Leversedge kills himself, still leaving her his whole fortune. There is only a very small bit of weirdness, as the whole thing is focused on the upcoming wedding, which is a shame seeing the flashback scene at the beginning is the best part of the book. John William Harding was a British writer who was born in London in 1864. He was the American correspondent on the Daily Chronicle and was on the staff of the New York Times for several years. His first book was an art failure in 1896 and his last novel seems to have come out in 1909. I have no idea when he would have died. Today we shall secondly review his 1898 A Conjurer of Phantoms. Archibald Danvers is living alone after the death of his parents, with his only friend being the medical student Job Diogenes Bangs. One day, bored of his perpetual loneliness, Danvers winds up wandering through the streets in the rain, where he meets the taxidermist Peter Zadowski, who convinces Danvers he is an amateur of sensations, i.e. a sensationalist. As he goes to visit Zadowski in his shop, he is told by Bangs about some sort of fantastic herb the old man is supposed to have, which he got from some mystic in Malaysia, and which can relieve someone from all the cares of this world. Zadovsky, according to Job, as rich men pay millions for the privilege, and keeps getting robbed and mortally stabbed over said herb, but is always fully healed as if by magic. There is a girl at Zadovsky's house, being his blind daughter Ruth, that Danvers glimpses occasionally and of course falls in love with. There is also Luigi, the old man's servant and villainous hunchback around the house. One day, Danvers tries to steal the herb for himself when the old man got drugged by Luigi, being very easily tipped over into attempted burglary on Zadowski despite knowing him for years now, for someone we are supposed to root for, and who gets to marry Zadowski's daughter and gets his immense fortune. He is also never really that apologetic about it. There are hints about Zadowski being semi-immortal, but he talks way too much about sensual pleasure so we never get any confirmation. 